Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to connect your Buzzy account to Stripe to accept payments. Stripe handles uh, and powers some of the world's largest internet platforms and it's really easy. You do not need to be a business uh, to accept payments inside Buzzy. Uh, being an individual is quite okay too if you need to accept payments from someone or, or, or team members. Uh, so what I've done is I've created a uh, test account over here and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. So the first thing I need to do is go into my profile and when I select my profile there's an option there called profile and settings. I'll select that and, uh, and at the bottom over here you'll see there's a payments uh, stripe uh, option down here. I'll click that once. And when, I'm, when I click that, there's, uh, I'm presented with a very large green button that says connect to Stripe. So uh, I'm going to select that button and what that will do is open up a page on Stripe. And um, straight away I can see at the top right hand side here, there's an option to sign in. Now this is an option if you already have a Stripe account. This will make this, this setup process even easier. Uh, you'll literally just sign into your Stripe account using your own uh, username, uh, email address and password and uh, that will then connect your Buzzy account to Stripe straight away. If you do not have a Stripe account, we need to fill in a few details to get cracking. Uh, once you fill in this form, your Buzzy account will automatically connect to Stripe and you can start accepting payments um, immediately. So the first question is uh, what country I'm in, I'm going to select Australia and um, tell us a bit about your business. Now, I don't have a business, I'm just an individual that wishes to accept payments inside Buzzy. So I'm just gonna say here, accept payments, and uh, that's all I need to know. And next thing is account details, your business type. Um, I'm not a business, obviously if I was, I could select company or sole uh, proprietorship or individual. Um, so I'm gonna go individual, I'm not a not-for-profit or in a partnership, so I'm going to keep it as an individual. The most important thing here to remember is that you do not need to have a business to connect or create an account on Stripe. Um, and then over here, I can put in a business address. I'm just going to put in my home address over here. That's it. And my postcode in Australia, and that will automatically uh, populate the suburb I'm in. Uh, for the website, I don't have a website. Um, obviously, if you had a company website, you could put this in there if you were a business. So I'm just going to put in uh, Buzzy's website here, which is www.buzzy.buzz, and that'll work perfectly. It tells me that's a valid URL, no problem. And then the next thing on my personal details. So my legal name, whoop, should learn how to spell my own name, and uh, my date of birth. Don't tell anyone. And uh, my street address inside here, which I'm going to use the same as the business address. So, and that's it. Um, did this detail over here. This is a description and phone number. So this is what will appear on the credit card statements of, of any customers or anybody who is paying you any funds. Um, so you could put a you could put a business name inside here if you wanted. Um, it also says yeah, don't worry, you can change this information later. So um, I'm going to leave that blank for now. Um, being an individual, and then the next most important thing, obviously, is here Stripe are asking for your bank account details. Um, so what will happen is when you receive payments inside Buzzy, um, your Stripe account will obviously accept those payments and the payments will then be transferred into your bank account. So it's really important that this is entered in correctly. Um, so at the, the BSB level here, you'll put in your branch number. If you're in Australia, you'll put your BSB number in here and your account number details will go inside there. And, um, and then that's pretty much it. So the last step here, it's asking me to, to save my Stripe account. So in this instance, I would put in my email address and choose a really strong password. And then finally, there's a big blue button, bottom left, that says authorize access to this account. Once you've put in your email address and your password, you will select this button. And uh, the next step is it will take you back to Buzzy. And uh, this is what that will look like. 
um, it will say cool you have connected you have stripe connected to buzzy uh, you can log into stripe to see transactions you can also disconnect the stripe account from buzzy down here we presented with a whole lot of options of payment preferences um, and this, this allows us to, to choose uh, which currency we wish to accept payments in um, and the other thing I can do here is I can add a margin to payments I receive. So, um, so obviously by selecting this option uh, all transaction fees will be charged to the person making the payment. Uh, so if I wish to uh, negate or add a margin for any transaction fees I can add that in here. Um, or I can, and then over here I'm given the option to apply this fee to payment buttons or to payments that are made in comments inside Buzzy. So uh, we have another help section that explains this in a little bit more detail, and, uh, but essentially really what you're doing here is simply adding a margin to payments that you receive if you wish to, or alternatively you can choose to absorb uh, those transaction fees. And that's it. We have now have connected our Buzzy account to um, to Stripe, and we can start accepting payments inside inside Buzzy by either inserting a payment button or by accepting payments simply uh, in comments. Hi, Dave from Buzzy here. In this video, I'll introduce the Buzzy Figma plugin, run you through how it works, and we'll create a simple Hello World app with it. So let's dive into Figma. So here's a simple app design. It's, ba well, it's basically a single screen, a start screen. It's got an image and some text, and that's it. So let's run the plugin. Now to find the plugin, just search for Buzzy in the Figma community, and it'll show up. Now the first time you run the plugin, you have to connect Figma and Buzzy. So we'll click this connect to Buzzy. This will open in a browser. Here we go. So this is a Figma screen that's asking, it's Figma asking you to give Buzzy access. So we'll click allow access. There we go, we're connected. Um, as it says, we can just jump back to Figma, we're kind of done with this screen. So let's go back to Figma. So here's the plugin, you'll notice it's um, divided into three main tabs, design, publish, and data. We don't really need to worry about data today, we're just gonna look at design and publish. Now you have the option when you first run the plugin on a Figma file to scan it, and it'll look for app screens and navigation based on your prototype setting, your Figma prototype settings. Uh, this app doesn't really have any prototype settings or navigation defined in Figma, so we won't really worry about that. But the way the plugin works is you use the design tab and you can select items in Figma in your design. And in the tab, you'll notice it shows up. There's our start frame, there's our hello world text, there's our image. As you select items, they'll appear in the plugin here, and this is where we can assign roles, behaviors, and actions to them for our app. So the first thing we need to do is define a single screen. That's basically the minimum we need to publish an app. So there's selected our start frame or screen. In the plugin, we'll define this as a screen. It's the only one we've got, so it's our start screen. If we had other screens, they'd be, you could define them as different types. Uh, we could define a screen name if we wanted, but we can just default to the layer name, that's fine. Now you notice this little toggle down here, this is a recently released uh, feature where if you leave that unchecked, the app will publish just as it is. So the frame, the screen frame will be exactly the same dimensions that you've defined in Figma. If you make it responsive, it'll resize to fill, for instance, the browser viewport. Uh, that requires a bit more knowledge and complexity and setup within Figma. You need to make sure that your file is set up correctly for it to behave correctly as it resizes. We won't worry, worry about that today. So that's basically it. We've defined a single screen. Now you notice that we've got this list of items down here. So this is where the things you've defined in the plugin show up. So we can see we've got a single start screen defined here we've got no components no fields defined no actions at this point and so on if you open one of these if you can click on this it'll select that item in the layers panel in figma and jump you straight to it which is a handy way of navigating around as you do things 
But that's basically it for the design tab we're sort of done. So we can just jump to publish. Now here you'll see that the plugin applies to the single page that we're on. So this is a simple file. We've only got one page, so it's kind of a moot point. But if I had multiple pages, each page could contain a separate app definition or a separate app. Um, you can give the app a name. Uh, again, this defaults to the page name in Figma. In this case, we'll just call it, that'll do, my app. Um, all we have to do here is click convert. Now the first time you run this plugin on a Figma file, you'll need to provide the file key. So that's just in the share dialog here. So you just copy the link, paste it in here and click continue. You only need to do this the first time you run the plugin on a file. Okay, there we go. Now, it's told us a Buzzy app has been created. It gives us a preview URL. There's a backend URL, which is the link to the actual Buzzy backend for your app and a QR code. So you can scan this with your phone and preview your app on a device. Uh, we'll just click the preview URL. Here it is. And there's our screen. Uh, if I close this stuff, move the plugin, close this, jump back to the browser, there's our app as designed in Figma. Now, if we need to make a change, for instance, let's jump back into here, we'll go to the design tab. Um, what do we need to do? Let's change this text. Um, something a bit more. There we go, rocket, a bit more suited. Make it a bit fatter. Uh, let's change the color. Um, there we go. So we've made a design change. Now we need to update our app. All we have to do is go back to the publish tab and update. Okay, and that's completed. So if we jump back to our app design, click refresh. There it is, our app's been updated on the fly. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and have fun using Buzzy. Thanks.